Hi, everyone. Thank you so much. I'm honored to be here. And my big idea tonight is that I believe that we have to redesign our future, and we have to do that by taking nature's lead. That means not dominating our surroundings. Because when I look around, I see a future, and I see products that our children don't want. I see a future that, excuse me, I see something that doesn't pre present itself with abundance. And I see something that only our species on this planet can do. And we excel at generating waste in our products, in our lives, and we don't think about it. We are unique on this planet for that reason. We waste just about everything. This is how we grow food. And I'm clearly passionate about this, and I take this stuff very seriously. These are open-air factories. This is how we bring sustenance to our lives. We rape and pillage, excuse my language, our landscapes to provide some basic needs. And what happens is that the environment around us continues to degrade in productivity. We don't only see this in agriculture and in the health of our systems and our bodies and the food that we're feeding, but we see this in our environment. We disrespect our most precious resource, and that's water. And what we do is when it lands on this landscape, which it should be so precious in a dry land environment like Southern California, we mix it up with as many pollutants as we possibly can, and we send it out into one of our most precious places, which is the ocean, as quick as we can. And this is what it looks like. And I see a slide that doesn't have one hint of vegetation or life in it, and that bothers me because this is in our backyard. But if we step back, there is hope, and I know that we can do this differently. I know that there, I'm full of optimism, and despite my initial tone, I'm going to show you a few different ways that I think that we can all be part of the solution to create something very powerful. But when we look at this planet, we don't see humans. We see positivity, meaning we see hope. We see a system that has always existed, and that is so exciting to me. Because when we look a little bit deeper, we understand in nature there's no such thing as waste. And that's pretty profound if we take a few slides back and then we put it into this one, into the context, that in nature, there's a core principle where waste equals food. Meaning that word waste, it doesn't exist. It's a human invention. And I think that we can change that. I know we can do better. And that's what we're here to do. So why shouldn't we emulate these design systems? In nature, what happens is when leaves fall from trees, that becomes food for other organisms. There are thousands of microorganisms that depend on those leaves. And what happens is that these bacteria, these fungi, these ants, and the other hundreds of different types of organisms, they create the essential nutrient for that entire ecosystem. So everyone plays a role. And it is equally as important as the greater tree, which is the greater system. I learned of our human impact, our negative impact on the environment as a teenager. When I was your age, I grew up as a surfer since this old. And I took it personally as I became a little bit more aware when I would see trash on the beach. And when I would go to surf after the rains, and there would be beach closure signs. And this is right here. I grew up in Newport. And I took that personally. I said, this doesn't have to be. And unless we do something about it, it'll always be that way. And for some, that light bulb went off in my head that said, if we don't do anything, not only will it always be this way, what if there was a day when we actually couldn't enjoy this ecosystem, this environment, this passion, surfing? That was threatening to me. So I wanted to do something about it. And I went to school at UC Santa Cruz, and I studied agriculture. And the reason why I studied agriculture, because agriculture is the number one source of pollution to our oceans. So I took a critical look. But I knew that the food that fed us could also feed the ecosystems around us. I just knew that was possible. You know, humans have a history of design. We've been at this for, what, a couple thousand years? It's a wonderful exper experiment that we call life. I think we're doing a pretty good job, and I think we can do a lot better one. One of the things that we start to see in these types of slides like this is we don't see nature. We've disconnected ourselves from these life-giving systems, these regenerative systems. Because if we find inspiration in the systems that actually have a lot more heritage than we do, if we can humble ourselves just a little bit and see that these systems have been designing and solving massive design challenges like life generation for millions of years, then we start to find some answers. We see that every single color, 
Every single texture, every single shape has already been designed. And it's been designed over and over again. And they've done a wonderful job. And they've done it without humanity. The most important thing here with inspiration is that every system is regenerative, meaning it's positive. And that's the core to sustainability. We hear this word a lot these days. But sustainability really means to give more than you take. And humans have a really hard time with that. Nature has a very easy time at that. So when we look at ge generating foods through regenerative processes, it looks a little bit different. It doesn't look like large monocultures. It looks like a diversity of polycultures, which means many things working together in harmony. And this is a project that I created um, in Costa Rica about 10 years ago. A th we took 1,000 acres of degraded pasture and we turned it into a, a regenerative agroforestry which means that we not only produce an abundance of food for the local community, but we also pro provided an ecosystem, which created habitat for wildlife, including jaguars, which were on the adjacent national park, but also created important ecosystem functions that we don't think about often in human systems, which is carbon sequestration, which is the production of oxygen, which is actually just the connection between water and hydrologic cycles really important things, and you wouldn't see that through most of our agricultural systems. We think about how our water systems could be designed. Well, it looks a lot different than what I saw in the industrial landscape, because what I see here as a core principle within water is that as water travels downstream, it grows, the quality increases, the integrity grows. So to think that if water is traveling downstream, and just 100 meters to our west here, to our east, excuse me, is San Juan Creek. And to think that every, sec every step down the river, the water grows in quality, there would never be such thing as ocean pollution. We, this just so happens that I'm on this watershed, San Juan Creek, another mile down the river at the Ecology Center, and Doheny happens to be the fourth most polluted beach in all of California. And that's in our backyard. We are all responsible for that. So what if our water systems, again, look like this? Life is key, the key nutrient here. And what if our neighborhoods looked a little bit different than they do? And we are so blessed with, with what we have around us. But as architects, as designers, as humans, we just need to ask for a little bit more. We need to ask for systems that support one another, that are conduits for community. A lot of that is about green space, spaces that provide recreation in a healthy and harmonic way, but also spaces that provide function, like a backyard garden. And I know that most of you, since Saint Mar uh, part of the St. Margaret's community, have a little idea of what it means to be green. And I'm going to push you guys today to find a few new solutions that will really think about eliminating the concept of waste. And I know these are things that all of us can do, and that's why I'm presenting them tonight. So we all have waste at home. And so one easy thing to do is food scraps. We generate a ton of food, and I hope you cook as much as you possibly can. And the thing with like a forest is that food scraps is not a waste. Why would we feed our landfills when we can feed worms? So how many have a worm bin in this room? Yeah, there's a couple. I know, those are gardeners. So, but you don't have to be a gardener to have a worm bin. You just have to emulate nature. So what worms do is they digest your food scraps and they turn it into nutrient-rich compost. And that's all the nutrient your garden, indoor and out, will ever need. And if you're not a gardener, we'll pass it on. But at least know that you can take that power into your, into your hands, into your households, and actually close the loop. So food scraps, there's no such thing as waste. What about waste in the community? So again, let's redesign all of our buildings so that they capture every single drop of rain. Because if no rain entered into our streets, then our watersheds would not be contaminated because it wouldn't be picking up the pollutants. So what do we, how do we do that? We create rain gardens, and we harvest rain in rain barrels, and we plant native gardens and permeable surfaces. At the end of the day, what we're doing is we're growing a wonderful, bright, beautiful garden that's full of life, and most importantly, we're recharging the aquifer before, below us. These are big ideas, but I know that we can all participate in them. And waste at school, I think St. Margaret's would be a great place to become a waste-free campus. And I know that um, some of these ideas have already taken shape today when 
Tate basically refused to use reusable or disposable plastic bottles for this event. And I think there's some nice gift for you guys that will be an inspiration for this such that why would we send our children to school with plastic bottles that end up in a trash and disposable all sorts of utensils and bags. It's just, to me, we're the only species. I, I guess I just want to push us a little bit further. I think that we can do this. It's really easy. It's a reusable bottle. It's a small tiffin. People all over the world do this. It's, we have the most privilege. Let's follow suit. I think that we're all ready for this, and I would love to see St. Margaret's at one point become a waste-free campus. So there's so many ideas, but I just wanted to give you guys a few. And I wanted to share a little bit of my passion because clearly this is something that, that, I, that means a lot to me. And I'm seeing a great amount of change in this community, and it's been a wonderful journey to participate with St. Margaret's and all of you on this. Um, these are, again, just a few simple ways that we can emulate and follow nature's lead. And I know that each of you also have your own set of solutions because I want to encourage us to design the future that our children deserve and need. So thank you all for joining me.